Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus today. I am Trace, this is episode four of five in our series on breasts, and I'm here with my buddy, Amy Sure Title. What's up, Amy? Not too much, how you doing? You know, just talking about boobs, no big deal. Yeah. So far we've talked a little bit about breasts you know, across like evolution and biology, but also a bit about social pressures that come with breasts. But we've talked a little bit about media and advertising when it comes to breasts and how they're used by those groups in order to do things. But that's just one way we see breasts kind of in the social sphere. The other way comes from breast cancer. It's a very visible disease. There are a lot of different charities involved and a lot of different people. So even though we hear about breast cancer all the time, I don't think everybody really knows what breast cancer is exactly. Right, well, according to the American Cancer Society, breast cancer is a malignant tumor, which is basically a growth of irregular cells in the breast that then grow and invade the surrounding tissue and spread to other areas of the body. It occurs more commonly in women because we have developed breasts, but it's a myth that it's related to the bra that you wear or deodorant. There have been some stories about aluminum in deodorant is linked to breast cancer. Um, it's not, and one of the ways that we can kind of say that it's definitely not related to things that we do ourselves is that, as we've said before, men can get breast cancer Absolutely. as well. Yeah, men have breast tissue and breast tissue develops breast cancer. It's, it's as simple as that. And in fact, we have to remember what's in a breast when it right. comes to this, right? We've got milk producing glands, we've got ducts, we've got fatty tissues, we've got collagens, and all of these things can get cancer, but it seems to be most likely that breast cancers begin in the cells that line the ducts in the ductal tree. But it also can start in the lobules, which are where the, the milk producing glands essentially. And it's a small number of them that start in other tissues, but for the most part, it's in the milk producing parts of the breast, which also makes sense as to why women would have that, because they're more developed, but that men, again, because we have the same things, would end up getting. But there's another major contributing factor, and that's genetics. Yeah. There are two uh, genes, BRCA1 and BRCA2, also called the BRCA, BRCA genes, genes. Yeah. that scientists have long known that women with the BRCA1 gene have an increased risk of both breast and ovarian cancer. Yeah, and the BRCA1 and 2 are thought to keep cancer in check by repairing the DNA. So if you have a mutation on that gene, you're gonna have interference with the repairs thus have a higher risk of cancer. Right. Essentially, you're not preventing cancer as strongly. It's not yeah. that the BRCA gene causes cancer. The cancer was gonna show up anyway. Yeah. It's just your body isn't fighting off the cancer as well. Yeah, it makes you more susceptible to right. were you to develop these malignant cells. You, you can't don't fight have them a way to fight them, exactly. Yeah. And Angelina Jolie made these genes famous, uh, I think, or this is where I first heard about it, um, because she got a double mastectomy back in 2013, I think. Yeah. And she had an 87% chance of getting breast cancer, up from about a 12% chance, which is probably more average. Right. But what it is, is she comes from an Ashkenazi Jew background, and Ashkenazi Jews tend to have this mutation on the BRCA genes. So this contributes to a lot of people, especially people of those backgrounds and people with genetic predispositions for breast cancer from getting checked for breast cancer, because it's scary. Yeah, one in three women is actually too afraid to get genetically screened to see if they have this BRCA mutation. And I will say, because my hands are shaking even thinking about it, that I am one of those women. Mm. I I come from an Ashkenazi Jewish line and the gene does run in my family and oh. I should, um, the my genetic counselor has told me that you're supposed to get tested five years before your closest blood relative found their cancer. Mm. And for me, I'm very much coming up on that date. So I'm I'm trying to get, not stressed about doing right, it, but it, right. it really does, I mean, cause me a lot of anxiety even thinking about just the reality of like having to face that. Yeah, yeah, um, it's a big deal. I know yeah. I, I have had friends who have also uh, gotten checked and they ended up finding cancers, but they were able to because they found them early enough deal with those cancers and now they're coming up on anniversaries of you know their hair being the same length it was before they started chemo. Right. Shout out Kelly Bugden, you are the best. And you know, it's it's a big deal, but really what it comes down to is you're checking for cancer risk and trying to mitigate that risk. Exactly. If you if you find that you do have a gene mutation, it doesn't mean that you have cancer. Right. It just means that you should start just taking the precautions to make sure that you're monitoring yourself and making it, you know, giving yourself the best shot at beating cancer should you develop cancer. Right. Knock on wood, no one out there with the mutation has gets cancer. Yeah, and one way to do that is the way that Angelina Jolie chose to do that, and that is a mastectomy. Because a double mastectomy can reduce the risk of developing breast cancer by 90% for women who are at the risk. Which so if you huge. take that, I mean, that's a pretty huge reduction. You're actually getting around a normal risk level, which is still kind of scary to think about. But, right. uh, you know, there are things that 
you can't always catch, even when you're looking at and looking for breast cancer. Right. So a double mastectomy is one way to do it, but I feel like there was so much discussion around the Angelina Jolie thing because she's famous and she's somewhat famous because of her breasts, right. which is interesting. Yeah. Um, so people felt like this sense of ownership over their like part in her body, which is weird, but there are people who feel that way. They're like, oh, you have cancer? Just cut them off, no big deal. Yeah, which I feel like would be really easy for a doctor and possibly for a male doctor to advise a young female patient. But I know if I were in that situation and a doctor said, well, you know, just, just cut forget about it, just remove your breasts, I would be kind of annoyed and a little bit insulted because yeah. I think, and I'm this is me personally, but I, I feel like other women probably feel this way, that my my breasts and my figure is very much a part of who I am. Mm -hmm. And I've I've had this body shape and sort of my proportion since I was about 13, you know, right after puberty, and having, just giving, cutting off a part of my body, if I didn't need to, would be devastating because right. I'm still me. You can't change the fact that I'm me, but I would feel different about yeah. my physicality, and that's wear huge. Differently. You just look at yourself differently yeah. in the mirror, and this is something that a lot of people have to struggle with. I mean, when you lose a limb for any number yeah. of reasons, I mean, like testicular cancer, it would be kind of the male equivalent, and it's significantly less visible than yeah. a double mastectomy to have like testicles removed. But when somebody says like, oh, just cut them off. Like what if somebody was saying, just cut your balls off, no big deal. Yeah. Like it is a big deal. It's a big part of what makes us masculine and feminine and not just in terms of physical structure, but also in terms of social structure, which is kind of a big deal. Yeah, it is. We've talked a lot about breasts over the last few episodes and we've been focusing a lot on men. Uh, until now, like this episode was really great. And we've also focused a lot on the West. Uh, and we've talked a little bit about men versus women. And we've talked a little bit about biology. We've talked a little bit about a lot of stuff. But have you ever thought about like people all over having opinions on breasts? Not just like advertising, not just doctors, but like how people throughout history have viewed breasts. Because everyone has something to say about boobs. This is true. <laughs> and we're going to talk about that tomorrow. So make sure you subscribe and come back to Test 2 Plus so you can get that episode as well. You can find Amy and I on Twitter. I'm at Trace Dominguez. Amy is at AST Vintage Space. Come and talk to us about this. And we'll see you next time on Test 2 Plus. <laughs>